where and when do you feel so comfortable, so much at peace that you don't have to worry, that you can let go, that you're just at peace. Not a single thing has to worry you. Where is that? When is that? Where you can breathe freely and feel like not being in a cage. No one wants anything from you. You don't have to worry. There are no schoolwork that gets to be graded. So all the to-dos, everything fades into the background. For me, some of those places, besides being just at home, comfortable on the sofa, and maybe with a cat on the lap, are outdoors, being just by the river. The other day, we were riding the bicycles on the Isle of Kew, and a lady who is walking regularly said, when you come back, look at that eagle this majestic bird, this eagle, was sitting on this tree that was leafless, so the tree was dead. It found this one spot. It was wow. It was like awesome. Then at the very, very end on the Isle of Q, there are these flowers, and they have a mixture of purple, pinkish, and they move. They're almost like trans transparent. It's like this different shades, how they move together. And when I see them, when we're at the end, I'm just, I'm wowed again. It's this, wow. A simple flower, someone else may call it a weed, or it's just there in the ditch. But it's blooming. It's uh, just adding this spark, adding this beauty. It's almost like something stops, something falls back, and something blooms and comes to life in that moment. The Celtic spirituality describes this experience of holy moments or of wow experience of aha, of seeing things. They describe it as thin places. And often they say actually there are locations, there are some wells, there are some trees, there are some mountains, there are some rocks where you can pay special attention to somewhere where God's world and our world are so close that you get a glimpse and a touch of it. And they say it's just a veil that connects our world with God's world. And that veil on occasions is lifted and that's when we see and recognize some of that beauty that is always around us but that we sometimes don't see or don't take time to see. In our scripture reading, Jesus invites us to do just that. Jesus invites us to look at the birds, look at the flowers, and get the wisdom from that that our worth, our lives, our value is not in worrying and running and getting things done. That God watches over us and that we're to be free just like birds. And that there is an inherent beauty in us just like in flowers. Flowers don't have to do anything, just being, just being present. And that's the invitation for us to just be present and breathe freely and experience the soul growing wings and rising 
and being at peace. So much of that we long for and we need, especially during this season when we're out of breath and COVID, out of breath and feels like we cannot breathe freely because so much is constraining and containing and eating at us and uh, worrying uh, and fear and frustration and anxiety, all of that seem to be mounting on. So to recognize that and to pay attention to that and see that all of creation is connected with the living one, that is an invitation for us to take it in and to live with that. <clears throat> Psalm 24. You have learned it, most of you, early on. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. So every little bug, every tree, it's all God's. And I love the perspective of our Jewish sisters and brothers when they pray before meals and when they pray before eating and when they prepare before getting the groceries, produce out of their garden or getting a chicken from the backyard or whatever they do. Their prayer is an acknowledgement that it's all God's, it's all holy, it's all God's. And before you take something from God, you acknowledge that. So I take something from God's bounty right now to use for my well-being, for feeding me, for giving me strength and all. You see the difference. It's not like everything is devoid of God and we make it holy by praying over it and so on. No, it's the different perspective. It's all God's already. And to acknowledge this is a gift of God. This is a treasure. This is, wow, yes. <clears throat> and that is the idea of the creation story too. There are two creation stories in our Bible and the second one which we just heard read is that God shaped humankind out of the dust, the dirt, the ground, the soil and breathed the breath of life into humankind and humankind became a living soul. And God placed you and me in the garden that God planted. It's a garden. It's precious. And God ordained us, called us, entrusted us with this garden to be good farmers, to be good caretakers, to tend the garden. That's what it is. It's God's garden. It's God's earth. Precious, wonderful. And we are called to care for it, to tend it, just like a good garden. Oh, a lot of it doesn't look like we have taken very good care of it. When you look around. Hmm. The breath of life, the psalm that says, praise the Lord, my soul, and everything that is in me, praise his holy name. With every breath, we do that when we pay attention to it. And that's what breath prayer is about. <clears throat> breath prayer basically means it's a very specific form of prayer. You pay attention to your breath, and when you breathe in, it's almost like you have a little motto. You breathe in and say those words to you, and then you breathe out and say the words out, out again. And it doesn't need to be any prescribed words. The traditional words 
that come from the Eastern Orthodox Church are Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That is, it's almost like breathing. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Now, for me, sometimes when I do breath prayer, I'm just sitting there and think of love. I breathe in with love and I breathe out peace. Breathe in love. Breathe out peace. Breathe in love. Breathe out peace. And that's what it meant, what is meant in our scriptures when it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. It's almost like this summary that Paul gives us. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. How do you pray without ceasing? Well, it's meant the breath prayer. When you stay with it and go back into it, it's this God is breathing in us and through us and through our breath, we're connected with the living God, the breath of life. What are those sacred places for you? Where and how can you let go? Where and how do you feel deeply connected with your soul? Because you can let go. You know you're at peace. And do you make that space? Do you take that time in your life, in your week, in your month, in your year? Where and how do you connect with the living God through creation?